On this week's show, the Georgia Southern Eagles try and rebound from back-to-back losses, and it's a tall task at hand as they travel to Georgia Tech. Previews and analysis upcoming as we welcome you inside the Eagles Nest. Welcome inside the Eagles Nest. Joining me from the Statesboro Herald, Georgia Southern beat writer and sports editor, Mike Anthony. And Mike, this week the Georgia Southern Eagles traveling up to Bobby Dodd to take on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Of course, we all know what happened the last time the Eagles went up there. They probably played one of their worst halves of football, followed by one of their best halves of football back-to-back. And the Eagles end up losing that in the last seconds of the game. This time around, new coach for Georgia Southern, new schemes for the most part, and Georgia Southern goes in having lost their last two. Your thoughts on how this thing is setting up for Georgia Southern versus Georgia Tech? It's really tough to tell. Uh, At the beginning of the season, you had people calling for this to be an upset. You had everybody talking like they were going to finish like they uh, uh, did in the second half, play four quarters that way. A lot of people almost uh, starting to write down that W in the column after Georgia Tech had a rough 2015 campaign. Since then, uh, a whole lot less confidence, I guess you could say, coming from uh, the Georgia Southern community. Uh, Three wins to start the season, but maybe a lack of explosiveness, some questions lingering about how good this team could be. And then the last two weeks, you've seen those fears kind of come to fruition. Going up to Western Michigan, which is now a top 25 team, that loss not looking so bad. However, when you look at the ways in which they lost the game, the big plays, that's what stings you. You can't afford to give up big plays like that. The next week, they turn around, go to Arkansas State in a conference game where they could have really taken a hold of the Sun Belt Conference. All the big plays went their way. All the little ones didn't. They weren't able to convert points off the turnovers, weren't able to stop a couple of late drives, and now they're sitting in the middle of the pack in the Sun Belt, again, leaking some confidence and trying to get back on track, maybe getting out of conference play, just taking a swing at one of those uh, big boys of the Power Five will do the trick. Recently, I guess Coach Summers and some of the coaching staff have come into some questions, especially having to do with that Arkansas State. I think it started in the Louisiana Monroe game. There were some questions more about what's up with the offense. You know, we got maybe five of the top backs we've ever had. They just don't seem to be able to break free and make big plays. We've got most of the players back from last year. It just seems a little strange. Then that turned into as you mentioned, the Western uh, Michigan game. And then you had the Arkansas State game, which at the time they were winless on the season, had just lost to an FCS team. We know they're a little bit better than maybe their record showed, but still Georgia Southern had five gifts in the form of turnovers, could only result in three points, end up losing that game and losing a lot of maybe what the fans were thinking, oh, okay, maybe that was just a blip with Western Michigan and we'll come back. Now this week, you've got two coaches actually that are coming under a lot of fire because Paul Johnson has lost the last couple games and Georgia Tech, there's got to be some movement there Mm -hmm. of fans that are a little upset. And you got Georgia Southern, you put them together and you've got, you know, I don't even know if Georgia Tech winning by what the spread is, 10 points, is going to be happy for the Georgia Tech fans. Well, you look at this game, and we mentioned going into the Arkansas State game, how even with that 0-4 record for the Red Wolves, you couldn't be too confident because it was a team that showed it had talent, and it was a team whose pride was hurt, and those are dangerous teams. Georgia Southern maybe now fitting that bill a little bit more. It's one thing to have questions when you're winning. You can still point to that record and say everything's going to be all right. Well, now things not quite as okay. Two losses in a row, the team struggling to kind of find an identity, Maybe this desperation is what they need to kind of get back to basics, work on fundamentals, do what the coaches say to do after a loss. Maybe those two losses, some inspiration to really put it all together and have that game that I think a lot of fans still believe is in them. It's just something we haven't seen so far this season. You mentioned it in a column this week, winning kind of cures everything. If they, they end up finding some way to beat Georgia Tech, then of course, it's going to quiet everything down, and you can get the uh, you can buy your Aaron Rodgers relaxed shirts, and <laughs> and maybe they'll start selling those at the bookstore. But I think a victory over Georgia Tech would do would do a lot because then maybe you go to the New Mexico State game and and you win, come back and you got app, and maybe you get some momentum. Whereas if you lose to Georgia Tech, 
that New Mexico State game becomes a little bit tighter. They're not a bad team, not like they used to be. And then you got to turn around and face Appalachian State. So do you, how much pressure do you put on the Eagles to pull off a victory in this game? Well, they, they do need a win, and they're not going to be favored in this game. They've shown no reason to be favored over the last couple of weeks. But if you're, uh, if you're the Eagles, you have to rally around yourselves, look at it, and say, we need to stop the bleeding. We talked about the schedule. Uh, throughout the preseason, how it only got harder as the season went along. We're right in the middle of that four game uh, road trip that we talked about being a challenge. And when things start going downhill, you don't have the benefit of playing in front of uh, home fans. You've got different schedules with midweek games. You throw a hurricane in the middle of that mix. It's just really tough for these guys to, to find what works. It's tough to get back to basics when everything's kind of uh, helter skelter as far as the schedule goes. So it's going to take a win. and. No, it doesn't get easier, but the farther they dig themselves down in a, in a trench, it doesn't matter that New Mexico State might be an easier game. The, the farther they get from that 3-0 and start, the more those losses pile up, the tougher it'll be to turn it around and, like I said, play the game that a lot of people think they still have in them. All right, well, we had a chance to talk with head coach Tyson Summers and some of the players about the matchup this weekend with George Tech. I think it's a cool game. I mean, I don't know what uh, uh, a different way of being able to say it. You know, like you said, the, the history between Paul Johnson obviously having been here, Mike Seawalk having been here, both former head coaches of Georgia Southern that had a good bit of success. And then, you know, being able to take all these ties from guys in the state. You know, it's uh, certainly a P5 opponent, it's an in-state opponent, somebody right down the road from what we play. Uh, I do think that there's a lot of tradition that kind of overlaps between the two places. And, uh, and so we're looking forward to the opportunity. Obviously, Georgia Tech's a talented football team and, uh, and has played in some tight games. I know that uh, they haven't had necessarily the success they'd like to the last week or two, but they've played as well as anybody can. They do a good job on offense, obviously, with Coach Johnson and the staff that he's really had for – uh, my guess would be outside of one or two adjustments, he's had the same group for about 25 years, you know, uh, defensively. You know, obviously Ted Roof, having played there, the success that he was able to have as both an assistant coach, coordinator, guy that's been a head coach in the ACC, uh, and is now back as a defensive coordinator, doing a fantastic job with the defense. So we're looking forward to the opportunity. It's been tough, uh, but I think uh, after the game was over, after we had our team meeting, uh, I think we were on the, all on the same page and uh, we're ready to get back to work. Uh, especially, it's really tough to lose, especially here at Georgia Southern. But uh, like I said, we just have to, uh, you know, just stay together, not point fingers at anybody, uh, and just keep working hard together. And uh, you know, something good is going to come out of that. I think this is going to be our tough challenge. Uh, every game is going to be a tough challenge. And Georgia Tech's a good football team. Uh, it's an in-state rival, if we, uh, you know, and uh, they're going to be ready to play against us. And uh, you know, we have to be ready. I know they're going to get ready for us. And uh, you know, it's going to be an effort and a toughness game. Uh, this game is going to be important for both of us, uh, especially both of us coming uh, from a loss. So, uh, you know, we're going to be ready. I know they're going to be ready, and it's going to be a good game on Saturday. Yeah, defensively, we're working on a lot of things to help improve our game. You know, uh, last week was kind of bad for us, but uh, we're looking to regroup and bounce back. Uh, Georgia Tech, going against them, you have to be very disciplined. You know, um, they do a lot of things to get you off your keys and things like that, so it could open up big plays, and that's, that's their goal, to make, make big plays, and we're just trying to – Eliminate that. Teams have been trying to make us throw the ball, you know, by crowding the box. But you know, we're going. We're Georgia Southern, so we're going to continue to run the ball in the middle. And you know, those creases are going to open up for all our running backs. And you know, we're just going to keep being able to get the ball out on the perimeter to all our great receivers. Y'all have a chip on your shoulder right now. We do, and we're ready to let it loose. Hey, Ms. Thompson, everything's fine. It's going to be no problem. I'll have you done in a few minutes. My name is Tracy Nordhaus, part owner of Complete Car Care, and I want you to come see me. Well, Mike, it's now time to get your bold predictions. What do you think about this game coming up at Bobby Dodd between Georgia Southern and Georgia Tech? This is, I believe, the Western Michigan game. There were underdogs in that one, but very slim this time it's about 10. Uh, your thoughts on how this one's going to play out? Well Georgia Tech as you mentioned has been struggling a little bit they've dropped a few in a row after a good start for them I, I think that their defense certainly won't be surprised by anything Georgia Southern can throw at them whether it's option or you know running that inside read up the middle you see plenty of that in the ACC with some of the explosive teams they have there once again it's going to be about getting those athletes in space sure the the Eagles aren't ACC but 
they have the talent that if they get in open space, they're going to outrun anybody in an ACC secondary as we saw two years ago. Eagles were running wild and scoring points. I still think maybe the passing game is what needs to do it, but I still think they're, they're going to be able to hit some big plays, put up some points. My biggest concern is the tackling. The tackling went downhill yeah. at Arkansas State. Too many guys running in open space there, and as good as this defense is for Georgia Southern, or as good as they've been, when it's a one-on-one -on -one, uh, situation in open space, much harder to corral those guys. Georgia Tech, we know exactly what they're going to bring on offense. The offense is designed to get those one-on-one -on -one matchups. I'm going to have to see it now before I can start believing it again for Georgia Southern to be able to shut down an opponent. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to go with Georgia Tech. I think they hit too many big plays. I like the Yellow Jackets, 35-21. Uh, I like Georgia Tech to win this one as well. I think it's going to be around 31-17. to I think that if we gave up 350 yards on the ground to a team that's averaging 80, it's going to be tough. But I think they'll play a little bit better defensively, and I hope that we are both wrong and that the Eagles can come out with a victory there because it sure would be nice to see. But as for the other sports going on right now, Mike, you got soccer, you got, I guess, golf wrapping up, and then you also have volleyball. Right, with golf, uh, the, the women's team wrapped up their fall portion of the schedule. Another solid showing, a fourth place finish, so something to really roll into the uh, break, the winter break in between the seasons with some momentum for the Eagles. The, uh, the men's team, they still have a little bit left on their schedule. You know, a little trip to Hawaii, you got to take care of the tough business. Have you figured it out? How, I, how we can get I, on I'm working on it. Uh, nothing yet. Yeah. I will keep you up to date. Uh, as far as the soccer teams go, the, the women's soccer team struggling a little bit. Two and five in conference play. A big win against Troy last week. They'll have another chance this week on Sunday at home against Appalachian State. That would be a big one to get back into the middle of the pack for uh, the conference standings there. As for the guys, they're just beginning conference play. A big win on the road at Georgia State. Georgia State usually a perennial power in uh, men's soccer, but a 3-1 win there. Another non-conference win during the week. They'll get a big test this weekend as they go to Coastal Carolina, one of the uh, powers in this conference, even though they're the newest member. And then as for volleyball, a couple of games postponed last week due to the hurricane, but they're off to a 3-1 start in Sunbelt play. They hit the road for an Alabama road trip playing Troy in South Alabama this week. All right, well, that'll wrap things up. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.